Right, real as it gets, episode 13. I'm your host, Callum Hickey. Today I've got with me George Edwards, a uh, good mate of mine. George, tell me a bit about yourself, bro. Yes, mate, good to finally do this. Um, so, yeah, my name's George. I'm a PT, Jim Box Farringdon. Um, known Callum for probably the last year mm. through through the Manor Network. Uh, Jim from in where? Southwest London. Through, where? through the Manor. Come on, Pav. Yeah. Come on. Uh, yeah, been a PT since 2003, I first qualified. And um, yeah, feels like I've blinked and now here I am. But yeah, I've been on a bit of a journey through the industry, lots of experience, lots of learning. Um, and um, yeah, it's led me to this thing called High Rocks. Yeah, tell, do you know what? Tell me about High Rocks only because uh, I was saying to you just before we come in here, I didn't have a fucking clue what this thing was. And I'm not saying if I didn't know what it was, it wasn't a thing. I just don't look into the industry that much. And when you done, you was doing a tour, a High Rocks tour, right? Through all That's the gyms it. in London. Mm. And people just went mad for it. Like loads of people from Manor, all the members and that are crazy for it. They love it. So 2020, maybe like January, turn of the year, a friend of mine messaged me and said, boy, do you want to go Germany and do this? Sent me a link. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Mm. It's a bunch of people dying on the floor doing wall walls and CrossFit. And I was like, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Something stupid, let's go. Something on. stupid, I'm in. And a flight, yeah. Standard. So we went to Hanover which, by the way, is the most boring town yeah. in the world. Really? Yeah, mate, it had pff, horrible vibes, so dull, really dry, yeah. no excitement, no one smiling. Anyway, went there for like 36 hours and, um, yeah, did this high rocks, which is basically 8K of running, broken up into one kilometre intervals with eight functional stations. 8K of running? Yeah. Oh, that's that's, so long. It's just the transition that's sort of a bit exhausting. But, and like I say, it's basically accessible, low-skill, CrossFit that doesn't change. So it's one event. There are different categories. You can do singles, doubles, pro, or every day. So the weights and reps change slightly. But the idea is, is that you can compare your times to someone the same age in Miami, LA, wherever, mm. you know, Berlin. And then you can measure your performance year on after year, see if you're getting any fitter, stronger. So you know how to train for it. And that's the separation between CrossFit and High Rocks is CrossFit is constantly changing as per their motto. Yeah. You know, which is fine, but one minute they're walking on their hands, next yeah. minute they're upside down. Do you know what? What I will say is what I do sorry, let me put that a bit closer. Yeah, go on. What I do like about CrossFit is it is so good that it allows shit PTs to look good. Yeah. Do you not think? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, the way yeah. they can you could get a shit PT that don't really know what he's talking about, but he can just annihilate a client with a Metcon. Mm. They leave with that sweat factor and like, oh man, I got through so much when <laughs> really you ain't really give them much of you. you just yeah battered them yeah so i do like what you it. said about how it's accessible for everyone for mm. no it's good like i say our parents could do it no problem i don't know they if would my just dad be do slow <laughs> well some people you know the stories of people doing it and you know taking three hours because mm. they signed up for the wrong category <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i did it immediately crossed the line and was like fuck that i'm never doing that ever again half hour later i've got the endorphins i'm trying to get on the ambassador program I'm, yeah i'm i'm fishing for like when you come to england when you're going to come to the uk Got some emails, and when they did come to the UK, I was like first on their list basically because they just knew I'd done the event. And, yeah. yeah. So was you leading the tour? Because I know you let you led it in manner, but was you leading the tour? At every yeah. Event? So basically, when I got on the ambassador program, because I was one of the five original ambassadors that, ambassadors that had done it, they were like, right, we need someone to lead more tours. I was my luck that being a PT and being in London, a market they wanted to crack. Mm. The other three trainers were outside different parts of the country and also probably didn't have the connections that I had. So, yeah. When did you get the master trainer with them? Um, and what does that mean? Like, what, is it, what does a master trainer mean with Hyrox? So I'm going to be heading up their like online program and their mm. academy. So you're going to basically accredit being, you know, accredit other trainers, basically, if they want to teach Hyrox at their gym. Yeah. So it sounds simple, and it is it's you know the movement standards are basic right for anybody to get right how you teach them yeah there's a little bit of coaching there how you teach them to one person is very easy how you teach it to like 200 people mm. is obviously a bit more complicated and how did you get into programming side i know you was heading it with theirs but when you're programming for people mm. and you compete do you mm. not feel like it <laughs> me personally if you were coming we up in a competition <laughs> against me i'm like i'll give you this but i'm not giving you that because that's how i'm going to beat you so i mean across since I, I mean, I've always done programming for people yeah. as a trainer, but then throughout, because I did the original event in Hanover 2020, then we had lockdown mm. and I turned my garage 
into a high rock specific gym i see some of the pictures that so I, gym looks I had sick. it all yeah so i was training for it so i went through like the things you don't do you know do a full sim every week yeah but don't do that <laughs> we rip reese for that at work because yeah. he's always talking about sim and we're like yeah. oh here we go. yeah he's exactly. got the high rocks yeah. bike half sim full sim all that <laughs> so don't do that you know you don't you, there's a lot of movements you don't need mm. you, know, you don't need to deadlift you, know, yeah, you don't need fair. to clean and jerk there's just minimal things you, you know because reese do. done well when you've done his programming and he stuck to that he stuck to most of it he had a few yeah. days where he was trying to combine things and ah, you know okay. but it, that was a generic program that was a template just mm. to get him started because he was cane in the running yeah. oh mate he was putting a shift on the run mm. that's the bit that would get me not that, it, not that it ain't all hard but the burpee broad jumps and the 8k run I think we done one full run through as just mm. a group at manager remember we used to message you oh, yeah. give us a workout for high rocks yeah. let's just try and get into it and it fucking destroyed me man yeah Ben Gray no, got me through that one it's so, sim it's so simplistic mm. and brutal but that's the thing where you can learn compare yourself see if you can get any fitter and faster but yes yeah, so I got involved that way um, yes yeah, so I'm heading up the academy in April um, so got the the main guys come over from germany they're going to help me jade the other master trainer mm. um to help implement it out to like their partner gyms so you have like you can be a high rocks affiliated gym yeah so with that you get a bunch of discounts you get tickets you get access to concept two staff puma red bull staff oh you're with puma now as well aren't you? yeah you yeah yeah. Found Reece, on, yeah you can you be found on that yeah, really so when he well. finished, he opened like there's like lockers that you can open as like a prize, and he got like a month or a couple month ambassadorship with him. That's right. That's sick. Yeah. Uh, g give them a full layout of how high rocks would go for anyone that you've just spoke about high rocks, but how would the whole workout go? All right, men's pro. Yeah. One k run into a thousand meter ski yoke. One k run into a hundred and seventy five kilo fifty meter sled push. Yeah. One k run into a hundred and twenty five kilo sled pull into a one k run into 80 meter bro uh, burpee broad jumps <laughs> Fuck. yeah it's got a yeah. <laughs> into a 1k run um into a 1k row yeah a rower another run into 200 meters farmers carry at 64 kilos mm. that's the two reds into 1k run into 100 meters of 30 kilo sandbag walking lunges to 1k run <laughs> 1k run fucking yeah. hell yeah into 100 wall walls 9 kilo 10 foot what's the worst bit coming off the lunges yeah yeah well actually yeah. Hot, pretty halfway on the lunges when you're yeah, like I thought I would be if I judging by listening to it I feel like I'd eat the lunges my legs would carry me but you've been through it and obviously you know so you like I don't know how the Do legs you know what? take it I'll be real for you the worst bit is actually I'm a bit weird, but like when I'm working out, I don't really like any of like the fucking the hoopla and the noise. Yeah. I'd rather have my headphones in and crack on. Fair. I hate it when people keep saying like "Go George." Like, <laughs> what do you fucking think I'm doing, man? Yeah. Like, I'm, well, when they're all up there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just like, like I just hate that because it's not it's not helpful. Yeah. But I know it's weird. The eggs, just, eggs, everyone else say like. something different. Yeah. Like, if you're gonna motivate someone, it's got to be like shock factor. Yeah. In that arena, like you're doing shit something you're so far behind you how fucking you how are you an ambassador <laughs> <laughs> all right cool <laughs> maybe up, yeah. but like when it like every lap and you because people watch from the fence and they just repeat themselves it's the same like, thing like, oh, <laughs> you're killing me but yeah so that's that's high rocks um yeah they sold out london um four thousand um people all competing. london's the one coming up no yeah april 30th yeah, yeah so. and the last one was birmingham last no one, not manchester. manchester yeah so yeah. that's what it was yeah. Did you see all the uh, man a lot up there when you went? Yep. Did you have a night out with them? No. Nah. No. Fair I uh, went straight to bed. I was actually in the bin. Yeah, actually, but... no, I didn't. I went for a steak. Fair. And then, then I went to bed. High Rocks has grown though, isn't it, over the past year or so? Well, from where I'm standing, it looks like it's just blown up, man. Yeah, they're having some trouble cracking the American market. There's lots of competitors. Weren't they, that American geezer on with them? Hunt, is it Hunter? Yeah. What happened with him? I and thought he would have been the face, bigging it up over there, no? Yeah, it's just a different market. There's just lots of they're slightly behind on the old COVID game. Oh. So various COVID, cities. What's that? <laughs> Never heard of it. That cold. <laughs> Never heard of it. Yeah, we'll get to that. They're slightly behind as far as like what cities are more open. Mm. And so I think they had to cancel Boston. Ah, uh, got it. Uh, yeah, I mean obviously there's a certain, Boston would have been a vibe. Yeah, there's a certain amount of tickets that. they need to sell, right, to make the event profitable. But like towns like Florida and Texas and Tennessee and are open places like California, New York, Boston are essentially closed. Yeah, well, like they're not anymore, but at the time they wanted to have the events there. So I think they've just been they're going through like you know understanding 
that market. It's very different to our country. You can get around the whole place in five hours. Yeah. You know, yeah. which is Americans are like, yeah, easy. That's a flight, isn't it? They, well, got they, they drive everywhere, mate. They drive everywhere. Yeah. I've got friends that will drive from Colorado to California 14 hours. Oh, they, they do it all yeah. the time. Fair play. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going out to Cali on Monday to go and train with Hunter for two weeks. Yeah? Yeah. What else are you going to get to up there? Yeah, we're going to have a couple of nights out, he Yeah, said. got to be yeah. done, man. And um, I'm looking forward to um, sunshine, a few beers, mm. um, see what the talent's saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Firstly. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. when, when in LA. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, but mostly just try to get my mojo back a little bit. I've, I've been in a bit of a training funk recently. It happens though, isn't it? it? Like whatever people see on Instagram and stuff, trainers get it as well, man. Oh, yeah. People can dish up posts about yeah. motivation and all that shit. Everyone goes for a slump, even if you love training. I've been training yeah. since I was 19 and mm. I'm not going to lie. Now I'm enjoying my training at, at the moment, but I go through waves, man. I go through waves where I'm like, the discipline will keep me in there. That's, a, that's, that's generic, it is. isn't it? You know, yeah. like all discipline keeps me going. Yeah, but it's true. I'll get it done. But if I was relying on motivation, I'd be fucked. Because I'd have months off. It's it's more like just it's like brushing your teeth. Yeah. Like you got to do it. You got to get up and just do it. Even yeah, when like you're half it's, asleep, you're just sitting yeah. there brushing your teeth. But I remember just early on, I'd sort of just say, like, I'm going to have a 15 minute workout, whatever I can do, 15 minutes, and then I'll call it. If, yeah. if I'm not enjoying it, I'll call it. Yeah. And I sort of still stand by that. If you're really struggling, just say, right, 15 minutes, push, pull, move, squat, whatever. Do half a class, and if it's shit, leave. What got you into training originally? Um, well, play football. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, you know, just fitness for that. Mm. And then you start going on holiday with the boys and thinking, well, my shoulders are a bit smaller. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? What's he taking? Yeah. Or I need, yeah, I think I need to get a little bit stronger here and a little bit better and a little bit fitter. Mm. Um, but yeah, essentially a bit of vanity, I'm not going to lie. Would and you start off on bodybuilding? Yeah, yeah. Everyone starts off on bodybuilding. Starting yeah. on bench and Staring biceps. Staring in the mirror. I love Classic, them. I miss yeah. them days. Bench and biceps. I remember yeah. going fitness first with my friend Chris. And I'm not joking. We were like bench pressing 60 kilos. We yeah. were like 17. And it was like, right, well, why do I have to wait for you to finish? Just we'll do, do something else. Yeah, pick up those and start curling those. Oh, what, in between? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we discovered it. <laughs> and then, the we, pump, then yeah. we found out about creatine. We were like dropping it. Yeah. We, we, it was in the serum at the time. Fucking hell. It was going back some. Yeah. So you put it under the tongue. I'll be like, just getting a nasty pump. Yeah, but don't you think them days were and fun like, because oh, you just yeah. you had proper something to look forward yeah. to? Whereas now it was just copying so what other much variety. Which was just, just copying what other blokes were yeah. doing. Going, well, I could probably do that a bit better. That doesn't quite look right. I do you ever remember that. CT Fletcher? Yeah. Oh man, I used to watch him before going to Is train. He used to hype me up. Now I look at it and I'm like, I was a prick. <laughs> you know, I used to get proper get hyped up to go and lift shit, and now I'm just like. Oh, I got squats. I mean, this fitness first. First of all, it was in Basildon, so you got to, you got to remember that's like the absolute asshole of yeah. the world. And I don't think there was like anybody in there that could call himself a professional. Did you ever but do legs then? No. Everyone when they but, start, but, no one gets into legs. <laughs> legs. No one does. But also, in my in my ego, it's like, why would really he play football? Yeah, my legs, my legs are gone. Yeah, they carry me for ninety minutes. Exactly. Yeah. So. Now it took us ages. I was with a group, um, a couple of pals from my area when we used to train. We'd just do, like, Monday was religious. Mm. Monday was bench day. I know there's, like, a cliche about it, but Monday yeah. was bench. And sometimes we'd roll up, like, eight of us. And any poor fuckers in the gym, how many sets you got? All eight of us would turn around and say, nah, nah, we've got this for a little while. <laughs> It'd just sucks. be bench. It'd just be bench till none of us could bench anymore. Sets on sets. That's and I look back now, but I think because there is a variety of training, I couldn't go back to training just a body part. No. It would, fu it would drive me mad. Yeah, if I went in and I, if I couldn't do an hour of chest now, no, it's or dull. go in and do an arm day, that would drive me mad. Yeah. So it's just mad to think your evolution of training. So after bodybuilding, where'd you go? You must have dabbled in CrossFit. Yeah. Everyone had the CrossFit phase. Yeah. Um, although to be fair, it was it went functional first a little mm. bit because I remember just going to a gym in the States that wasn't CrossFit, but they had like sled track and rope climb. So I wanted to do that first. Mm. And then this is around 2010. I walked into a gym in New Jersey. Yeah. And it was just a big open space. And I was like, what's this? Oh, what, the first box? When yeah. It was like, yeah, boxes look weird to like, anyone who's come from a bodybuilding yeah. background. You look, it's like, it's like it's empty space. space. <laughs> yeah, it's a warehouse. <laughs> yeah, it's going on. And then he explained it. And I did a couple of classes, enjoyed it. And I was like, okay, interesting. Yeah. And then came back to the UK, joined Gym Box. And it just, you know, it started creeping into that space. Um, even though that old gym box in Farringdon 
wasn't really set up for CrossFit. There were people doing CrossFit there. Was and you there when it first opened? Not when it first opened, but like... Is that yeah, how you yeah. met Ryan? Through Gymbox? Uh, yeah, Gymbox, so right? the old Farringdon Gymbox by the station is now Mob 45, but it's closed. Oh, the okay. new Farringdon that everyone goes I to I didn't now even know trains. there was an old one. Yeah, exactly. in a different space. Yeah, that was yeah. like the mega gym that opened in like 2017, maybe. Yeah. So it's been open like, like five, six years, I don't know. So yeah, different spaces, but obviously CrossFit's basically cottoned on since that um, Netflix doc that came out and everyone was like, holy shit, mm. I'm going to get jacked. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to just <laughs> throw bars above my head and walk on my hands. And I think that's it. where everyone fucks up. I still, I still can't do anything. Same as me though. I'd watch something <laughs> like that and I'd go, I want to be like Rich Fronin. Yeah, exactly. You're never going to be like that guy. No. But you go in and you do workouts that are just stupid, two, three hour workouts thinking yeah. you've got the tolerance for it. Like, yeah. That was the thing though. I, that's how I probably got into more endurance side of things. I would literally just... I would just be in the gym mm. and I would almost see like, oh, how long can you stay in there? And it became a game. I'd train for an hour, I'd eat, come back, train for two hours, eat, come back. Fair I'd go have a sauna, change and go and do it all over again. And all of a sudden I'd be like, I've worked out for six hours today. Fucking hell. I'm quite hungry. Yeah. <laughs> but then I'd, there. but I wasn't working out so intense. I, I couldn't move the next day. I was just always doing stuff. Yeah. And I don't know really, then the trail running came came along spartan race was the thing that sort of got me into like what running. is that I've, I've seen that again i'm probably the worst person to ask in the industry because i don't know about a lot about what's going on in the industry spartan race is basically obstacles man-made and natural uh, and cross country okay so the cross country might be up a mountain like they have all the international events and all the championship events are essentially like ski slopes in yeah. the summer Fucking hell. so i've done them all over the world and they are the hardest they're rough it. yeah mate would you do it again Oh yeah. Oh, you were. Yeah, I love <laughs> it's it. like punishing yeah. yourself. It, well, it's it's more just you when you train for it, you get better, so it's less punishment. But the first time you do one, yeah, is is it's naughty because your body's so yeah, unaccustomed to that amount of movement. Like you're you having to do like high knees through like the bushes oh, and grim. thorns. So you all of a sudden you're like, fuck my hip flexors. Hips all jacked yeah. up. Yeah. And then you're on your hands and knees crawling. You're like, why do my shoulders hurt? Like <laughs> because. You know, you train shoulders and you think well, they should be strong. Mm. Because you don't ever crawl on your hands and knees under a barbed wire, yeah, it, it hurts different. And then you're carrying a sandbag for a mile. That's, that's the most like yeah. life-ready kind of training anyway, isn't it? It is. Really? I did one in Lake Tahoe, 2018, oh. and it was minus seven. And you have a 42, 20 kilo sandbags. Yeah, just, uh, just, over, just over half a mile carry into a lake swim, which was fucking With cold. the sandbag? No, no, you're gonna say fucking yeah. drown. Right? Yeah, I'll swim it out. <laughs> There's a few. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go, Not many survive this, but go on, you'll be alright. You'll be straight. Go. On. <laughs> just fine, just keep it above your head, mate. It's a pillow. I yeah, know, yeah, you'll be fine. One. You'll be fine. Just go. <laughs> Bare people dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah and then you've done all the fucking runs. Yeah. And then what? How did you transition into CrossFit from there? Um, or was well, or was that after CrossFit? No, that was before CrossFit. Yeah. That was more just like I enjoy this more. Like yeah. I'm I just saw very early on that like what it would take to be a good level crossfitter, my body type, where I am in the mix. And was like, to be fair, I think it's a, as good a skill to be able to run this lift heavy weights. Like it depends, you know, what you want to get into, but I was still playing a bit of football, still already had a natural running base. So it was like, I'm already going to be better at that. So continue it. Mm. Uh, whereas if I start weightlifting, I'm going from day one scratch. And I was a bit like, oh, part of the ego couldn't take it. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Learning That's the hard bit though, isn't it? Yeah. Trying to drop what yeah. you've learned. And that, that ego is a fucking killer, man. Yeah, I was, really since, since then I've kind of you know, dropped that again yeah. and dabbled and stuff. And I do enjoy it. But again, it's more of a commitment thing for me now. There's lots of other things going on. And, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, Spartan Race is a lot of fun. I mean, it's sort of like part Ninja Warrior getting across obstacles. I see. That looks like it'd be fucking good. That is. The Ninja Warrior stuff. Like, mm. I'd, I'd give that a go. Yeah, it's fun. It's just the 12 miles, 15 miles of running that you've got to worry about. Yeah, that's grim. That's grim. Yeah. That's the one thing. I want to give it, I want to give High Rocks a crack. Yeah, but I'm not a good, I'm not a good it, runner. No, I, I know, do you know what it is? It's not that I know, but I'm a trainer. I know like you can train for something. I just don't enjoy running. I really don't enjoy running. You can jog. You can walk. Yeah. You know, just go and smash up all the in-between bits. I might do pairs. Yeah, that's a good way. To be fair, I go with someone who's a shit runner as well. You know, worse than me. I'm like, come on, but I'll lead the pack. I've got this. Let's go. Yeah, no, I'll give it a crack. Mm. I'll do it next year. Yeah, no, that's. I mean, that kind of sort of brings us up to speed, really, in, in the training. Well, you said you've been in the industry since 2003. What have you seen change since then? Fucking. Oh, up. mate, you must have mate. seen loads <laughs> change, especially now compared mate, to the I remember. Now. I remember my PT exam 
Three sets of ten, bruv. Let's go. <laughs> is that, is that what yeah, it was? Three sets of ten. On everything, yeah. Lap three sets of ten. Seated it, shoulder press, all it, that easy stuff. Yeah, lap pull down, yeah. bench press, bicep curl, tricep yeah. pull down. See you later. While the guy go. just waits in the corner. He waits in the corner. You can hear it. You can see him there, but he's trying to blend in and like listen to you while you're doing Mate, it. Fucking just, if I did that whole course again, I would just probably be arguing with the guy that ran in the course. Probably. But there you go. I mean, it's, you know, like, it's easy to part. If you was going to give any advice to a new trainer, it's easy to pass the course. But then you have to be open to learning off other coaches once you start because they don't teach you enough to go out and be a great no, trainer. Of course not. I mean, no it's, let's be real. The PT qualification is absolutely basic. I think you can do one in a month. Maybe. It's a joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, when I done mine, it was fucking ages ago, but mine ran concurrent. So I'd done like, uh, what was it, like four-week course for the level two. Mm-hmm. And then straight into, it might have been a six-week course at the yeah. time. It's with the same company. Yeah. And it weren't like, it weren't hard. Yeah, it doesn't, it's just your experience. You can have that knowledge and that knowledge is still relevant. It's just more like your, you learn all that information about like programming and how to do a bench press right and how to do all this. But you don't work with anybody that's compromised. Mm. And the general public are massively compromised, not yeah. only mentally, yeah, <laughs> mot yeah. motivationally. Mate, there's a lot of things. But like that... they're going to come in and straight away you're going to have a woman that's like, got the worst dorsiflexion you've ever seen yeah. can't touch your toes and you're like shit we can't the squat laptop go, pff, the laptop like, hang goes the squat. so hell. you need to have like a whole arsenal of regressive you know and progressive exercises ready to go so you can help this person get a session in mm. and then it's about educating them along the way saying well you're doing this today I'm not going to be here tomorrow and this is what you're doing Yeah, and y you got to like you know, you, you got to build them up you got to keep their confidence and keep, keep them on track. Personality goes into it massively as well. I've seen PTs that have got all everything ticked off that would make them ideally a good coach, mm. but then no conversation chat. with people, they're yeah. just like fucking hell. They're like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. You got to be sociable, wouldn't you? You got to be like, you don't want to be too motivated. But then I reckon that goes two ways. So I was going to say like that you get clients as well, and I know it's bad. I, I'm not saying it to sort of slag them off, mm. but you get clients as well that even when you're trying your hardest to make it feel comfortable, they won't give you chat. You know the ones that yeah. don't give you chat at all yeah. and you're like, fuck, this is a long hour, man. This is dry. This is <laughs> like hurting. You know, like you're looking at the clock. I know I should never look at yeah. the clock, but I'm thinking, yeah. I'm a chatty person. I love it. So when someone's not giving it back, I'm like, fuck, is it me? <laughs> Did I do something wrong? I've had a few sessions like that for oh. sure. You have to... Um yeah, keep asking questions, get yeah, in, what's that's going it. on. I mean, don't me. get me wrong, you get people like that that still get through everything you ask and mm. you're happy, but you're like, you don't look forward to that hour, let's be honest. I'm just honest no. about everything, I don't mind, yeah. but no, no. I don't look forward to hours like that if the person's like that. So that's why I try so, my hardest to put my personality into it. I want to break you in a sense where I want to build your confidence up so yeah. you're chatty with me. That's it. So I've noticed, like, and I'll be real with you as mm. well, that since come back after the pandemic yeah that my style of coaching has changed a little bit to some clients yeah in the sense of like i'm i am dumbing it down again yeah because i'm quite a technical trainer and yeah like, i don't really want to like give you a barbell unless your regular squat yeah is fucking absolutely you shouldn't be touching a barbell exactly. if your if your air squat doesn't look good exactly. as simple as that yeah and people and that's what i feel trainers do they're like yeah go and put that barbell on your back mm. good good as they're doing a half rep remember what mikhail yeah. tagged us in the yeah, other day absolutely you have no right touching yeah. the barber if your squat's not good. Exactly. So And yet there's this obviously pressure in the industry. Like if you're paying rents, you know, like I am and like a lot of trainers are to stay in the mm. game, you're just trying to make money each month. Yeah, there's that trade off between like, you know, giving someone a session and what they think they need and what they actually need. Yeah. And it's that constant battle and yeah, I admit to myself, sometimes I'm just a bit like, do you know what? This is I'm fighting the world here. Yeah. This guy isn't gonna learn it. He doesn't want to learn it. His, his commitment that's what it comes there. down to though man it, so like, like, at well, the end of the day if you had more commitment to really I'd go it. through it yeah. more but that's the thing when someone's like thinking they're going to sign up you could sign up for 60 sessions right and pay someone 4 or 5 grand you may or may not be where you want to be yeah but you, you, nothing's going to be perfect if you've never you know if you skip PE when you're yeah. 18 <laughs> right? had a desk job for 12 years and then come and see me you know you're in a bang in trouble yeah. yeah so you need that natural athleticism to shine through to like have those clients to just get it, you know, yeah. and then obviously you can get really good changes and stuff. But that's what coaching is, isn't it? You've got to like, yeah, you got to find the, a way take to the problem to and, yeah. and help them. And just saying with the pressure of rents and with people's commitment and it's the only industry where people want to fucking barter. Yeah. Like, oh, it's mad, isn't it? Like, it's, so, about the health. Yeah, it's, it's so, so crazy. It's like, man, this is my price. 
Like, did you pay for that coffee this morning? Can you imagine them saying that to their drug dealer on a night out? Can yeah. you imagine if they wanted a ticket or something? They're like, ah, oh, I don't really fancy paying eighty quid for a good gram. <laughs> you do it to me fifty. The drug dealer's like, fuck off. <laughs> He's back in his. But mind. yeah, don't like see you later. Yeah, exactly. But with health, they're ready to like proper go. Mm. Yeah. It's not really affordable at the moment. It's like, cool. I say to people, you will be unhealthy for the rest like, of your life. How much did you pay for that coffee? I said, yeah, three quid. I was like, oh, you didn't try and offer him 250 No, you Mad. just paid it. Just because they're a shop with like, a brand. Yeah. I'm a shop. This is my brand. And you're, yeah. you know, you. a lot of people try to, you know, haggle trainers. And really, you should invest in a good one so you don't feel like you yeah. are getting, you know, I guess, like a, you know, a poor deal. But a good trainer is worth their weight in gold, and a, sh- and a shit one will yeah, yeah. send you to the physio in a, in a few exactly. weeks. Exactly, this is the <laughs> and thing. And this is you. what I was saying about the whole the CrossFit thing. Yeah, you get a good CrossFit coach mm. who like teaches you the main principles and stuff. They're fucking banging. But you yeah. get someone who just dabbles in a bit of CrossFit, who's a shit PT. They liability. can use that and just be t- that's that's terrible. Absolute liability. Yeah, like, <laughs> I see it all the time, and they'll take pictures of their clients on the floor, sweating, all busted, laying down in that like, yeah, death yeah. position. And they're happy about it. <laughs> like, that doesn't mean you've given them a good session. That's like that's fucking the, that's monkey could make you jump for an hour. It doesn't mean it's a great PT. Like, yeah, that's the like the fitness industry by its by its very words. That's like the car industry. Mm. You're you're trying to make something new that isn't new. So a car will get you from A to B, but like, what? How do you want to go? Mm. And that's the fitness industry. Like we we you know have to brush things up, touch things up with you know a new type of class or like, and gym box are the absolute. You know, they're the masters of dressing up the same shit and putting a different thing on it. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, we're on rollerblades now. <laughs> you know? Here's a, Anything for a, a hammock, class, isn't it? Here's a hammock to hang upside down in. Come and get your zen on. What's this thing they do with the... Uh, I don't know what that is. You know, it's hanging from the scene. They do the mad... What is that? I, do you know what I'm on about? When they do... It's not pole, but it's like some fucking... They wrap themselves in some sheep thing as they're coming down. Yeah, that's you know the, what I'm yeah, that's the aerial hammock stuff. Oh, yeah, I mean, okay, I don't okay. even know. I don't know what it but, is. I just see it and I go, that looks fucking nuts. Mate, I... Honestly, <laughs> if you, I mean, not only do they not wash those sheets, by the way, guys. So oh, great. You're just, like laying, you're going. just laying in other people's sweat. <laughs> yeah. Bang. You're underground in a gym. Like, there's no natural air in there. No light, no fucking natural air. You're stinking off this hammock. Yeah. <laughs> I can smell you from here. It's horrible. <laughs> exactly. So you might have Lululemon on, but you're, you know, you, it's just a bit woke for me. But yeah, there you go. Would you say the industry's gone that way? Since 2003. Yeah, we've, we've it's turned in, into that whole convenient. We've tried to basically blend convenience, mm. like the consumer, like like any consumer industry, driven industry, we've tried to make something easier. And people try to um, justify that by saying, but we're getting more people fit. And we're not. We're just dumbing, dumbing it down. Mm. And we're saturating the market with basically stupid 45 minute boutique workouts that don't give us anything yeah and we're demonizing people that are obsessed and in good shape because that takes hard work and dedication yeah, yeah, yeah. and because when you have to work hard and dedicate yourself to getting you know in shape like yourself there are easy days there are hard days and you keep going yeah and it's not for everybody because it you, it takes something of yourself to do that it's a different well, beast isn't it when yeah you and you're up and do it when you you're don't you like... don't need a shake with your name on Mm. You don't need a branded T-shirt. You don't need to tag yourself where you're working out every day. But people outside the industry, they want to feel like they're belonging to something. So you go to Barry's, you go to Rebel, and you go, right, I want to be part of this. And you follow your trainers online, and you, mm. you want to get into it. And But you think 45 minutes is going to give you something. Yeah. And really, that's like, that's like a warm-up. If you're trying to get in shape. Yeah, 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 of course. You know, And you're going to do that. So it's a warm-up, yeah. even if it's Barry's. Oh, no, the worst thing is you'll go into it not warmed up. Yeah, and then you'll just come away with loads of injuries, especially like. Uh, obviously, Manor does some things that would be classed as hit. Of course, but the whole hit that, that, hit class thing when people are doing seven or eight of them a week and I've just not spoke, resting, yeah. I'm like fucking hell, man. I've just spoken about me having to compromise my own type of training for, yeah. for money, and yeah. that's that's what the industry has to do because it has to survive in that way. So it's this kind of like, you know, yeah, it's just negotiation with the truth. And unfortunately, you said like. Your question is, what advice would I give you, like a new trainer? I would say, yeah, do the basics and master them. Yeah. And then you'll be able to, you know, you'll be set up for life, you know? Because that skill of teaching someone how to squat, deadlift, clean, yeah. do a pull-up, that, you know, people will still be doing those exercises in 100 years. Have you seen that post? I think it was from Scott University where it's like, you don't want to hear this because it doesn't sound sexy. Mm. But training comes down to about 
eight or nine exercises that you'll do for the rest of your life. Yeah, of course. You, obviously, people try to fancy it up and add this and that, but realistically, mm. you could stay fit, stay strong with about eight or nine exercises. Mm. But it doesn't, that doesn't sell. The problem is when people are, like I say, compromised injuries, mm. lifestyle, you know, drugs. <laughs> drugs, they're good though, aren't they? <laughs> we'll go down the drugs route in a minute, actually. Oh. Not the heavy shit. Actually, I might talk about the heavy <laughs> shit. I don't care. You can tell me. Um, actually, we'll go drugs now. You um, talk to me about mushrooms, because this is a thing that I, I won't say who, but people at Manor, Mm. Um, I've done the whole mushroom experience. I've not tried it yet myself. So last people are like, swear by it for being, I don't know, getting you creative. Well, right? mate, lockdown was terrible for me, right? Mm. I lost my business. Um, I broke up with my partner. Mm. Um, I spent a load of money that I don't have now mm. trying to salvage that business and salvage that relationship. And I spent a lot of money on a gym that I don't use. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And yeah, I was in a bit of a dark place with the relationship and I offered, I was basically invited to a retreat out in Wales and um, I offered it to my missus at the time. She didn't want to go. I ended up saying, look, do you mind if I go? I'm desperate to get away for a couple of days. Came back and um, I was basically changed in the sense I was much more like, it was a little bit of a breakthrough. What was it like, just being aware or what? Um, yeah, it's basically, what's it like? It's so hard to explain, isn't it? Especially under the pressure like this. But essentially, I'd gone there with no expectation, which is obviously a pretty good thing. Um, I We had the trip. We have three grams of mushrooms in a tea. You have some like a cow chocolate before. But it's a, there's a, before you do all that, you're actually having a sort of sharing circle where you're talking to people and people are listening to you. Okay. No phones. No, like, oh, yeah, I'll get back to you. Yeah, 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 doing two things at once. Yeah, People are listening to your life and your, your problem or about you. And so you don't feel judged. You feel accepted. So then there's that energy in the room. And then you have a trip. And, every, and you know, I did this with 10 strangers. Mm. So I'm listening to all these other overlapping problems of, okay, yeah, you're not alone. And you feel much more connected to people straight away. Then you have the trip and it's full of, like, laughter. Like, the story you tell is, like, Yeah, but what's the feeling story. when you're tripping? Yeah, awareness, okay. heightened. Um, yeah, what do you mean by that? I don't so know. So, okay, se like okay, your senses, yeah. so like your eyesight, better. Okay. Your hearing, better. Your feeling of yourself and your body, better. Control over your thoughts and the gap between them, better. So if you want to think about something, it's your conscious choice to think about it. If you don't want to think about it, then you can pull back from it. You know, like, if I said to you, do you want to go and watch a 10-hour movie? You'd be like, fuck off. Fuck that. But you have no problem watching like the new F1 back to back on Netflix. Yeah. They just segmented into or like, porn. you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just saying, be yeah. honest. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But like 10 hours of that, hours. you'd have a problem. Isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I think I'm addicted to this. You've got square eyes. <laughs> no. But just like that's Netflix has done that by design to keep your attention, right? And you don't even know. They do it with food. You know, like you constantly you, you eat one Oreo cookie, you eat the whole box, mm. do it with ice cream. People call themselves foodies. I mean, are you fucking retarded? You're a foodie. Like, we've all got to eat food, hun. Yeah. yeah, you taking pictures of it and putting it on Instagram and spamming the shit out of me mm -hmm. isn't a skill. Like, no, if, yeah, I don't get it. Is that a job, foodie? People say it. Yeah, bloggers, yeah. foodies, whatever. Yeah, they make money out of it. Mad. Mad. Taking pictures of food, bro. I'm in the wrong industry. Yeah, we... we they earn a lot. I don't know. I'm fucking becoming a foodie. <laughs> There's, like, reports about this is the best burger in town, the best the best fucking salad, the best ice cream, whatever. But point is, is that yeah, you, you're putting something, you're putting so much emphasis on something that no wonder we're walking around out there with the fattest, unhealthiest population. When people are like tempting you, like, look at this cheesecake, brother. You need, you need <laughs> yeah, this cheesecake yeah. more than... Need it. People, don't people this, talk about cheesecake more passionately than they do about their partners. Yeah. <laughs> you know, wonder there's no problems about. I always used to think that about man versus food. You know the guy that used to host that? Yeah. That he talked started. about food in like a sexual way. It was weird. Yeah, but the guy had heart problems in the end. Did he? Yeah, oh, yeah, wow, yeah. He's got yeah. tap of man. Yeah, of course. Like, no, he don't take like 10 patty burgers for like, that's not yeah, a yeah, joke. Yeah, man. to shut down. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was a couple of seasons and done. Fucking hell. I used to like watching it. Oh, I used to get me hungry. <laughs> Mad. So, the, yeah, the mushrooms was like just an opening of a, of a door. Mm. And I was just like, wow, okay. Then I did some microdosing. So, the microdosing is you take like 0.2 a gram every day. So, what you barely day? even notice. It doesn't matter what time. 
Or is it first fit like? I just used to take it in the morning. Sort of you want it fasted ideally, just okay. so you can digest it a little bit. But you, it's so small, you don't even notice it. And you do like four days on, three days off. Okay. And then all of a sudden, you realize how good you're, you're having a conversation with somebody and you realize how good your memory recall is about a fucking thing you were when you were seven. Really? Yeah. So your memory and your cognitive recall just like shoots through the sky. And then you're like, and you're aware of that as you're talking about something completely different. Mm. So all of a sudden you're just a little bit more flexible. Like your neural potential is, has been increased because everything that you, we are exposed to, toxins, environmental pollution, everything has like a more of a suppressive energy. It's low vibes. You know, London on a Monday morning, grey skies, tube. Yeah, yeah. It's not party. It's no, not party town not because the energy creates that. Sun comes out like today. Yeah. Friday London's afternoon, banging, people London's are just like different smiles. <laughs> you know, I see people smiling, like, you know, riding the, riding the bikes with one hand on the phone. No one's got a problem with that. Yeah, no one gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> just living. <laughs> on a Monday afternoon, grey skies, mid-January, people are furious. I do an early class Monday, getting on the tube. Monday morning, fuck. We're miserable, innit? Yeah. Londoners are miserable. Yeah, yeah, proper. No, and, like, and proud of it. The majority, yeah, yeah, yeah. And proud of it. And we flog ourselves. If we're not busy, then you're not working. Yeah. If you're not like strung out, stressed out, bust, then you're not- Yeah, just yeah, busted. Then, yeah. Burning at both ends sort exactly. of thing. Yeah, that's just like the norm. Yeah, it's poor form. So the, yeah, the mushrooms are a bit of a breakthrough into that. And I met some lovely people I'm still in contact. And um, obviously, you know, my dealer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, you gave for them? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, of course. Oh, no, but like, it's, it's psilocybin. It grows in the fucking ground, bro. Oh, and it's yeah. demonized because science, you know, can't, you know, can't prove it. When I'm, I'm telling you, it worked. For so what, it's legit. You could just, you can get it from anywhere. Yeah. You yeah. can go to Epping Forest and pick them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you've got to worry about getting your door kicked in. <laughs> no. Oh, please, just fucking no, mushrooms. Well, well, most people do mushrooms probably behind a, you know, behind a skip in the back of a nightclub. We're in a skip. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Let's get them out. <laughs> but no, so it's just, that's not the environment you want to take it. You have to go in to the ceremony with intention and you have to go into the ceremony. Like, I want you to stop being so angry. Yeah, yeah. You know, like COVID may be an angry person, mm. you know, as I, for the reasons I told you. Of course. But, I wanted to let go of that because I knew it was that's good no for joke me. though. Like what you've described, that's a fucking domino effect as well, and it's yeah. one thing after the other going wrong for you, man. Yeah, I'm glad you've done that and then come back a, a different man. Like, yeah, I was, you know, in the summer, like I was just, yeah, I was in debt, and yeah, just dealing with a lot of anxiety and depression, and not I bet really your knowing. little one helped you loads as well. Say again. I bet your little one helped you loads as well, innit? She got you through it. Um, to, I don't know. I mean, she, she did. In your head, you kind of that far gone. I was just a bit like, in that time of the relationship, I was just like very somber at that mm. point. We'd already broken up in the summer and I was still living there for a few weeks, looking for somewhere else to live. That would be fucking hard. Because yeah, like anyone, anyone in their right mind would be like, right, I have to get out. You don't want to be constantly reminded just next to them. You can't when you've got a kid weeks. though. Yes, is what I'm saying. Like, it must be it's, hard. And it's locked down. Mm. It's not like oh, everyone's got a room to rent. Of course. So that was a bit of a tricky situation. And But um, there was a gap where she went on holiday with my daughter for a couple of weeks and I had two weeks to sort of get myself straight and I was lucky to find somewhere to live and you know just sort of commit back into work mode and things from there kind of started to pick up slowly and gradually and and you know to be honest the whole thing about going back to High Rocks is it kind of saved me a little bit because it kept me busy it kept me connected to the people in the industry it gave me like I don't know like I've I think we all kind of want some form of like adulation it's nice to be like praise it's nice to be like you know have positive influence around you i like to think i'll give that back to other people but sometimes when you're like in a really dark space that's when you need it more than ever of course you know do you want you want people to tell you you're doing a good job yeah and you're needed yeah it's like you need that bit of validation yeah you know? even though you try to people say they don't you do need a little bit of validation. yeah and i don't think there's anything wrong with it as long as you don't turn into a massive ego monster. <laughs> yeah yeah you know but we should do an episode one day where we just take the the half a take, G eat take, and just see where it leads. Just see where it leads. You've got to wait half an hour though, so it might be a bit dull. We have to do it before. Yeah, just chilling half hour, <laughs> yeah. no one speaking. <laughs> no, we should do one. But like yeah, so, um, but the, the ceremony, that's mm. the crucial thing. And if you think about men this day and age, there's no rite of passage. Yeah. Right? There's no, you're a man now. I mean, literally, you go through your entire teenage years, all of a sudden you turn 18. If you're lucky, your old man takes you out for a few beers. 
tells you about the birds and the bees. Mm. I didn't even get 18, that. 18, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Early before then. Yeah. <laughs> 18. <laughs> Bit late. <laughs> virgin. You've already knocked two people up. Fucking hell. But my point is, is there's nothing. There's no, like, you know, ancient, like, uh, I guess, you know, in our in our It's rare in our just past. to have someone to actually listen to you wholeheartedly as well. Mm. And actually, like, Engage. Be willing, yeah, be willing to listen to everything you've got to say rather than, to, like you say, yeah, 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 and just half, half heart it. Like. When people are texting. Yeah. And I'm, you know what? I'm quite you. bad for that. It's a bad habit. I got, I try, I think I can multitask, but I'm like, nah, but if you're talking, well, I'm doing that. I'm not paying attention. Very quickly, your brain's assessing whether the conversation is worth your time. And oh, you've, you've come to anyone I've done it to, they're like, what does it <laughs> And you've concluded board? very quickly that this phone call or this thing in my hand is more important. Yeah. That and is sometimes bad. Bad. you've made the right call. Yeah. But if the person Still calls you on it. that, if the person calls you out on it, then you're like, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> so you better have something good in the pocket to deal with it. Yeah. But yeah, there's, um, you know, ancient, like, shamanic, um, how do you say it? Like shaman. What's shaman, that? shaman. What's Whatever, where they, they do like the rituals and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've heard there's of these. Like, yeah, they used to have rituals like for being, from going from a boy to a man. Mm. And it would include some fucking bare real shit. Yeah. And we don't have to do any of that. No. Nah. Because we've got everything we need. No. Nah. So what I'm saying to you is just that now... We're worried about our pronouns and that. Yeah, we exactly. That's that's where we're at. <laughs> like, yeah. We're stressing over that. There's real shit going on and we're yeah. stressing over that. I mean, that's, that's, just, that's just funny. I, that, for me, that's like a problem on my phone. Yeah, I've, come I don't across. Really I've, not, I've not I've not encountered it in if real life. If I speak to someone, they said, oh, I want you to address me as he. I'll be like, see you later, mate. I'll like, trust you as a gun. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I'm not, yeah. I'm not wasting time saying all that. Yeah. Well, I'll be like, well, we've got nothing to talk about. Oh, see you later. I don't know. It's gone all weird. It's, yeah, it's not in the in the hierarchy of problems. That is in the thousands. We've got a lot more pressing problems. And Mate, we could be at war soon. Well, there's that, but just in a much, yeah, there is that. I'm learning Russian just in case, bruv. In case they're coming. I know, man. Fair. Just in case. I mean, you could. I know. This is what's, you know what I was thinking about the other day? This could fucking happen. Yeah, I mean, I don't really. Because if he bombs anywhere near NATO, it's on, isn't it? Yeah, well, Finland aren't part of NATO, right? And a Sweden? Oh, I don't know, mate. But there's like the pressure to like, they make sure they don't want them to join. Yeah. So if they do, then yeah, it's kicking off. I don't know. I just think we haven't got... You know, back in the day... I wonder if that works with Putin. I'll call me he, say my <laughs> pronouns. <laughs> I wonder what he says when you start saying that. Fuck yeah, no. Mate, back in the day, there used to be some nut job in a bell tower with a rifle trying to pick off you know, American presidents. Where's that guy? We no. need one. We need one. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, just wheel him out. Yeah. Stick him in a tree house. That's it. Go, right, here's your man. Name, name's yeah. Putin. Name's yeah, Putin. Oh, bang. <laughs> yeah. Job done. Oh, the world's going but, bad. Yeah. Lots to talk about. Lots of problems. Much more pressing than uh, pronouns. But to be honest, yeah, we, we, you know, kids these days, they don't know how to talk. They don't know, you know, don't know how to chat with girls. They don't know. Everyone wants a job in tech. Mm. Everyone's, you know, I, I've I have new clients, kids in their eighteens, twenties. I don't want to get too big. I'm um, just I want to lose a little bit of weight, and uh, I'm not, don't yeah. worry about me. You're not going to get too big. Oh, mate, I've been no, trying for twenty this years. This is it. You know, you know like, and they don't yeah, understand that. Like, when they're like, oh yeah, but you see, with like deadlifts, am I going to get big shoulders and like my big back? I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I've been fucking trying. <laughs> they're talking to me years. like it's going to happen next Friday, yeah. and I'm like, bro, Dad, I wish 20, it was that easy. Twenty forty. If that was the case, my calves would be bigger than yours. Yeah. Massive. <laughs> I just gave up on them. Yeah. <laughs> they don't grow. But that's that's the issue. Yeah. But we are the further we get away from you know, natural, basic human principles, the the bigger we you know the bigger problem society you know encounters. Mm. You know, like we are getting less sunlight every year. We're upgrading our technology more and more. We're working longer hours. We're spending f more time away from our family. We are genetically modifying our food. All these things. A, you know, they come back to haunt you. Yeah. You can't get away with that for that long, you know. So that's the thing with that. Like, you know, and it's so important. I've seen firsthand, obviously, with my daughter's three, like how important it is to like, if you can, if women can, to breastfeed. Yeah. You know, as, as opposed to bottle. Whereas some people go, "Well, I was bowl fed, and there's nothing wrong with me." And I'm thinking, "Fucking hell, man." <laughs> me well, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there isn't. But I'm just saying, you know, that cold you can't get rid of. Yeah. Cool. Let's talk about that. So all this stuff has an effect, and to think to think that someone science even can kind of create the same formula as breast milk mm. is just fucking naivety, and it's just it's it's a joke. Yeah. You think you can outsmart the human body? You're crazy. You 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 you're a madman, and that's where 
like I said, if you want to reduce your depression, you have to go back to nature. If yeah. You have to, you know, you have to do your cold showers. You have to do your breathing. You have to work out. You know, all that is discipline. Yeah. But there's no instruction of that. There's no advice for that. There's no TV adverts for that. It's kind of, again, we're having to talk about it on a podcast. Yeah. If you had this conversation down the pub, it would be lost within 30 seconds. 100%. Because people are so, you know, talking about football and getting shit-faced and doing lines. The good stuff. <laughs> the, Two the stuff that really there, matters. Can you pause that there for me? Yeah. I'm busting for a bit. Let me oh, go. I can't remember what we're talking about. You was basically saying that you took mushrooms and it made you a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> are you a vegan? No, <laughs> I was with vegans. You was what? I was with vegans on this retreat when I did the mushrooms. Did you get along with them? I mean, they're lovely people, but I mean, we're talking about performance. You know, I look very different to them. Really? Yeah. So it's, it works for them, great. But then I've worked with enough vegans that moan about. Yeah, but they, they moan about, you know, pressure in their joints. They got flaky, flaky scalps. Oh, these are the ones you've worked with, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, low energy levels, lethargy, problems sleeping recovery and I'm like yeah funny that <laughs> like you tried meat yeah <laughs> I mean uh, mate, do you know what it's just the quality I get what they're doing it's noble I don't no them. but I, I get what they're doing <laughs> is it like they want to save the animals and that <laughs> me personally I'm thinking mate there's kids dying over the world I'm a dad you're a yeah. dad there's kids dying in all these places across the world there's more things to worry about than me killing chickens I'm not even doing the killing I just yeah. buy it by the truckload. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? And if you're vegan, cool. I understand that. Yeah. Whatever. But I don't like when people try to force anything on people. Yeah, exactly. Religion's the same. Yeah. Like if, if it doesn't matter what religion you are, yeah. cool. You be a good Christian or a Muslim or whatever. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But when people force things on you, I'm not a fan of that. And yeah. I felt like a couple of years ago before I even, when I just found out what it was, people were like, no, 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 you should be vegan. You should, you should be vegan. It was like, I'm, I don't know, man. I like... I like a bacon sandwich and that. I like them things. I just worked out a long time ago that in order for me to live, something else has got to die. <laughs> it's harsh, isn't it? I know. It's harsh. No, it's about quality. I mean, if you're eating like chicken strips out of like Tesco's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you might as well go vegan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're don't eating tell like, me, don't tell me like grass fed cow, you're grass -fed protein beef, in from that. Yeah, if you're eating the good stuff, then it's like a cheat code. I yeah. have bone broth. Anytime I've not tried that yet, but it's always been recommended to me. Mate. Give it a crack. It's, it's, my, it's my cheat code. It's your go-to. Yeah. Especially if you're like... Feeling well, unwell, no? no? Not just unwell, but if you like heavy training volume in it, it's a superfood. Mm. I mean, you like... Yeah. And I don't mind telling people this, I think. <laughs> yeah, God, God, it doesn't matter, mate. This is called yeah. real as it gets. You don't hide so, nothing on it, man. One of my favourite things to do, I'll describe the day. <laughs> I like to behead pigs <laughs> and get all violent with it. What? Nah, go on, what you is, so recently I found this. So the type of like session I still enjoy is like a bodybuilding session, but where you're kind of like a little bit more aware. So you can smoke a bit of weed or be on mushrooms and you can do a bodybuilding session. You can do some heavy dips, heavy bench, whatever. And you just fill each rep slowly. What, while you're high? Yeah, just a little bit. You're not, you don't want to be mangled. Oh, I was going to say. And you don't want like any skunk stuff you just yeah. want some like trees um cold shower sauna some breathing techniques okay and the first thing you eat is bone broth you're walking around like a demigod oh, you feel the good, rest yeah. of the day maybe maybe two days but there's all this stuff you is malleable there's stuff to hack the, the human body yeah you know we are you know super creatures and there's a lot going on out there just um, not about that vegan life well, you've you got to find what works for you. Yeah. I mean, if I'm on the start line and... I've, like, I've tried vegan stuff. Yeah. But when they sit there and tell me, oh, it tastes like chicken, they don't. Don't lie to me. There's no need for that. <laughs> it's like, they don't need to lie to me. Well, anything me. deep fried can taste like chicken. Yeah, I don't know. Just, but my, my, my pal Phil, my best mate, swears by it. He lost loads of weight on it. Mm. I dated him. But then he had to, yeah, he went Cheers back to me. eating meat. And then, mm. so there's a reason you're going back. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Isn't, yeah, like I say, what works for you may not work for me and vice mm. versa so I, I do respect that like you say when they start jamming it down your throat and telling telling you about the nutritional content of yeah. vegan food I'm like nah I'm out as soon as you tell me it's man made I'm like sorry <laughs> got, got a problem with that yeah yeah I'm off yeah it's so me. it's just that really um, each to their own no no harm no foul um, but yeah I know what works for me and bone broth over a, a vegan burger any day all day long yeah mate I've not got you for long because you've got a client. So we need to get another episode booked in. 
We've got two minutes. Would you so, yeah, oh, no, I want to get another episode booked yeah. in and I actually want to take mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I swear. I swear to yeah, God. we should. Just like, but micro dose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or oh, should we take a heroic dose and <laughs> see what comes out of our hearts when we're Apparently talking? Apparently the hero dose is five grams in a dark room with a blindfold on. Yeah, so that's, that's yeah, Laura dose. from work said she'd done it. And I right. told you, when she was writing the messages in our group chat, mm. I was fucking terrified. She sounded like she's on a great time. Yeah. Like, it, like she really said it was amazing. But when I was reading it, and I said it back to her the next day, she was laughing, but it was like, no, you want to be. It just didn't make sense to me while I was reading. I was like, "Fuck." You want to be with good people. You want to be comfortable. You yeah, yeah. Safe. So she done it that way. I think she done the blindfold thing. She did. Like, she done it legit the mm. way you just said. But I don't know, man. Let me microdose first. See what I'm about. I'm normally an upper man. Yeah, I'm you, a class you, A. To be honest, guy. Like, you won't get anything if you microdose first. You need the big hit mm. that opens up the frontal lobe cortex and the brain, um, which is really important. So there's a lot of things that calcify that frontal lobe cortex. Mm. If you think about like how neural plasticity works. Like learn, you're able to learn new skills when you're young because you're, as a child, you've had less exposure to shit food, shit toxins. Yeah. When you're 30, 40, 50, 60, you have a lifetime. So your brain is less malleable to new skills. So the frontal lobe cortex, once it's opened up through mushrooms, is like, yeah, it's a good time to learn guitar, <laughs> try new skills, um, because that, you know, you're much more, your brain's much more adept at mm. learning new things. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, Who could we get on with us to do it? That'd be a joke. Three of us just microdosing the shit. Mikel. Mikel be good. Get Mikel on, innit? And yeah. then you two could just eat fucking vegans alive on it. I don't mind. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, it'd be good to. I've been trying to get him on. He's a hard man to pin down. Yeah, it's busy. Man. Hard, yeah, we're so busy, busy in this very town. Busy, yeah, this yeah. town is 100 miles now. I've got a lot of time for it that. Doesn't guy. stop. He's a fucking good dude, man. Yeah, he is. Um, he's uh, he's he's taking his biohacking to the next level recently yeah i know he's sitting at home with his balls under a red light ah uh, 100 you know? <laughs> and he's in a bathroom like 15 ice ba- ice ba- icebergs yeah. going up to 20 minutes about he's, he's reading books by candlelight <laughs> he gained some books though didn't he, it, it he do you know what i give does. it to him yeah out of everyone i know he's mm. one of the most organized men i've ever met yeah in my life. no he's got skills even to get a coffee of him you yeah. need to book it two weeks in advance yeah, he's got, the man's got skills yeah and i rate that no he's good wow uh, yeah, we do need to do another one because we need to talk Wait, about your fight. Wait, we've only talked this time, I'm saying. Yeah. And we've got loads. If you didn't have a client, I'd fucking stay for another hour. I know, I know, easy. But we'll get another one booked in. It was nice to see you, man, because I feel yeah. like I've seen you in fucking ages. Thank but you. I do like to finish every episode with a question, right? And it makes people think. Everyone's different. What's your definition of happiness? <laughs> Mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Mushrooms and steak. <laughs> definition of happiness. It's a hard one. Do you know what? I don't, I don't really agree with the whole happiness thing. Because I'm one of those people that, like, if I'm happy, I'm probably a bit bored. So, like, I like to you have... Like struggle. When, like, the brain is hardwired to struggle. This is a fact. You release more dopamine, more serotonin after a fight or after a hunt than mm. you will at any other point. So, if you're all happy and content, you you could be fat and lazy. Well, that could, could be your be definition. All, well, it's just more like... that's that's, I'm that's happiest that's when I'm struggling. Everyone. But people need something to strive for. So, if I need something to... I need a project. Something that I'm working towards... That to me is much more. So happiness. you need a mission. Yeah, absolutely. Don't get me wrong. At the end of the day, yeah, I don't want a mission as far as I got to worry about like food. Shower. Yeah, yeah. I need the basics, like everybody does. You can't and by thrive. struggle. You don't want to be fucking yeah, depressed. Exactly. There's that. Ba- there's that middle ground. Isn't it? Yeah, you need the basics to to be to have a chance of happiness. So that's you know that's a whole other conversation. But like there are people obviously that don't have those basics, so they've got no chance to even start that project. So everyone needs clothes, food, shelter, all that good stuff. But is that your dealer? Yeah. <laughs> Shit, he's, he's on to me. <laughs> There's no signal in this bitch. It's probably just a reminder. Yeah. My shit phone. <laughs> By the way, bro, this is a message to uh, Samsung. Um, don't buy them. Don't buy Samsung. It's phone. iPhone always. I'm so annoyed at myself. Let's go back to... I ain't even got AirDrop, man. Fucking <laughs> grow up. How can you not have AirDrop? It's embarrassing. Jason, every time if you film something, you can't AirDrop him nothing. To be fair, the Hawaii, the Hawaii phone, how you pronounce it? Oh, my mum had one of them. She's bigging them up. Because my mum had it. Yeah, your mum's ain't cool, isn't it? Like that. She, when she said, oh, "I've got this phone," I'm like, "I bet that's moody." Like yes. the prime of the Apple phones. killer. It was the Apple killer. It was outselling Apple phones left, right, and centre. See, I never knew that. Then they brought in this. Sorry, mum. Google embargo. Trans, you know, basically, they were like, "Look, you're outselling our phones in the US. We got to shut this thing down. Let's blame it on Chinese spies. Like we ain't doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, Fuck yeah. off." Like, no. yeah. Anyway. All right. Lovely to catch up with you, bro. Pleasure, bro. Book another one in Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go definitely. to LA and fucking enjoy yourself. I will do. And then come back tan, mushroomed up. I will. Yeah, we'll get another one booked in. You Episode 13, George Edwards. Thank you so much. Cheers, bud. Hey.